Hey everyone, welcome back to T-Squared. Now today we've been talking to members of the LGBTQ community who have lived in the foster care system. We met Manny and we met Nikki and they both just shared our stories with us. Um, unfortunately, there has been some struggles for them within the foster care system, but overall they feel that they've overcome those obstacles and now both work within the system mentoring children. So with the experiences that you've lived, I know that you say that you've lost all your family. Do you keep in touch with any of your family at all? Um, I have a, it's a weird relationship with my mother. Sometimes, like, she'll call me every now and again letting me know if she's doing better, if she's struggling. Sometimes I sometimes just don't answer the phone call because sometimes it's just bad news. Um, I try not to associate myself with my family because I feel like I left them for a reason and I start building my new family. And then I feel like when I have them in my ears telling me things that I don't want to hear, people dying in the family that I don't really want to hear about. It's just better just to keep them out of it, out of my life at the moment until I feel a little bit more stable. Do you think there's a chance though that you might be limiting yourself from them actually wanting to accept you for who you are now? Definitely, yeah. Because I just, I just feel I have a lot of animosity still because mm -hmm. of the fact that I had to go through what I had to go through. And just recently, last weekend, my grandfather's wife called me and said he's been thinking about me and he's getting ill and he's um, getting really old, but it's just like, I don't feel the need to reach out to him anymore because I reached out to him before and he denied me. And it's just like, I'm not gonna go on your time. I gave you my shot, you denied it. So there was your shot. And right, I as far as feeling, your grandfather yeah. goes. Mm -hmm. But for example, let's say, you know, you, you let temp, time pass by. Do you see yourself maybe reaching out to them in the future? Probably not. I don't know. Not at the moment. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Manny? I mean, like, I, unfortunately, your scenario was similar to hers, where you were taken out of your your family's um, environment. So, do you keep in touch with your family? Some I do. I, I, I see my mom every now and then. She's actually in a nursing facility. She uh, suffered a severe stroke, and my dad. Unfortunately, I, I do not like him. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of hate towards him. And was he physically or? He was physically abusive and verbally abusive. He, um, you know, liked to call me a faggot and that's not, that's not my son because you're gay. But it's funny because recently I was on Grindr and I saw him on there. <laughs> wait, what? You saw your dad on Grindr? On Grindr, yes. What did, did you, wait, did he like message you or something? No, I was filtering it and he popped up and I'm just like, wow, it was, it was. So you never, you didn't message him like you just. Oh, I wouldn't, I mean, I told my brothers and my brothers went up and asked him and. You should have screenshotted it. I, I did. Oh, okay, well, never mind. you know I what did. you're doing. I, I was gonna post it on Instagram, but somebody told me not to. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you would have do all of that. So there is just no chance of reconciliation for you two? No, he uh, contacts me on Facebook saying that he loves me and, and, but you know what? I can care less what happens to that guy. As, as harsh as that may sound, he's just an evil man, I think, and I have no respect for him. I don't have respect for people that don't have respect for themselves. That makes so. a lot of sense. Now, for like, I know that you live with your aunt. Do you keep in touch with her or your grandparents? Uh, my uh, grandparents, they passed away oh, uh, recently, that. and I do keep in contact with certain aunts and uncles and cousins, and the other aunt and uncle, or now they're married, I don't really talk to them. I have a lot of hate and resentment towards them, and um, just to, so I, I, so I don't have any, you know, ill feelings towards myself. I just don't associate with them. I don't want to associate with people that have this negative opinion or thoughts of me. And a lot of people in my family do still to this day. Um, is it because you're gay or is it because you've distanced yourself from them? Uh, no, it's, you know what? It, it, in my family, there, it's very competitive when it comes to last names. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately my last name, Grays, we're not gonna amount to anything in life and mm. we're gonna fail and um, and that's how they think of my whole family, all of us together. And I just don't want to be a part of that. I don't, you know, I just rather distance myself from them. Now, is it me being gay? No, my family is, everyone in my family, for the most part, besides them, the ones that I lived with, are very accepting. They actually knew that I was gay before I knew I was gay. Yeah, well, it happens sometimes. <laughs> 
So when we come back, we're going to hear from a professional who has worked in this field for many years, and he'll let us know his expert opinion as far as what it is like to work on the other side of the foster care system. So, we'll see you guys in a minute. Do you think that the gay and lesbian community has an obligation or responsibility to help those LGBT youth and young adults within the foster care system right now? Absolutely, because I think there are so many people that don't understand that there are a lot of children that are being kicked out of their homes, they're running away from home because their families don't support their lifestyles. And as a gay person, like I know it's our obligation to help younger people and to show them that we can be a positive um, influence in their lives and we can try to draw them in and like because we're all like one family so it would really help right. everyone out so okay and Kevin what do you think I think uh, yes it's very important as older gay people that we should look out for the younger community because you know a lot of them are being kicked out of their homes because of lack of acceptance and just you know the lack of guidance and mentoring and they're going down horrible paths in life and you know, we could do something, make a change for them because, you know, they are the future, especially for our community because That's right. the discrimination and stuff that we still face on a daily basis still is not accepting. And, no, they can make a change. If we can't, they can. So we can instill that in them. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the LGBT youth community is remaining within the foster care system due to issues surrounding their sexuality. So thanks, Ali and Kevin, for your thoughts Look, on the you. subject. Thank you. This is Boots on the Ground. Whoever could we ever could we be? I can never be nothing but authentically me. If you're looking for a place to have push you conversation, no longer have to fear, because you can have them here, here, here. C-Squared.